Hey, Colin here. Uh, today I went and checked my mail and I got a totally expected surprise VCLT in the mail. Um, and it's from Gary again. He's two ahead of me now as far as VCLT goes. I'm a little behind on my VCLT packages that I need to send out. But anyway, I got one today again from Gary and it's totally uh, unexpected. That's Gary Demarest. And it says VCLT from you know where. Pretty thick box here. It's a little heavy. Um, and I already popped the tape and we're just going to see what's inside here. Another surprise bundle. The 45s are not perfect but playable. Hope you and darn old Bubba enjoy. <laughs> nope. Wow! And we got some more killer uh, Pulp Fiction books here. A plot for murder. Murder can be fun. Oh gosh, Gary. I wasn't expecting you to send me some more books, but this is killer. <laughs> so to speak. Um, it says, he wrote a plot for murder, but a real live killer stole the show. Bill Tracy dreamed up an idea for a radio mystery called the Santa Claus murder and it was almost too good because somebody with murder on his mind decided to act it out for keeps. It's bad enough to read in your morning paper about a murder you planned yourself but it was even worse for Tracy when he realized the other person who'd seen his script was Millie, the indigo-eyed model across the hall. She was the only one besides Bill himself who knew the murder plot. Another fast-paced baffling thriller by Fred Dick Brown, author of the fabulous Clip Point and the Deed Ringer. Plot for murder. <laughs> oh. And Bus Stop. The touching and hilarious story of a footloose torch singer who knew too much about men and a cowboy he didn't know enough about women. An uproarious comedy. Yeehaw! Bus stop. This looks a little bit like Marilyn Monroe or uh, Jane Mansfield or somebody. Cherry and the Cowboy. That's cool, Gary. Thanks for sending me some more books. This will keep me occupied. Here's a look at this picture. It's a cowboy in a... A cow, I guess, or a buffalo. <laughs> um, maybe this is Cherry. <laughs> oh. Anyway, oh, we got there. We have a little bundle of 45. Harlan Sanders, a southern star in a northern sky. And the same song in mono on the other side, mono and stereo. And it's a demonstration copy. Cool. Herman's Hermits, I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. That's the closest you're going to get to hearing me singing. <laughs> and the end of the world. It's the end. The end is near. A little bit of Caligula came out in that. The end is near. Because I want your soul. <laughs> cool. Herman's Hermits, listen people. And got a feeling. I think I remember this one. Herman's Hermits. And Harry Chapin, the Cats in the Cradle. I've been to. Uh, what's on the other side? Vacancy. <laughs> it's kind of a. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to tell a story about um, Cats in the Cradle. I've been to a lot of. 
funerals over the years. Let's get morbid. But they, some some of them have been uh, some older men. And this song, sometimes they have a little playlist going in the funeral home. And it seems like Cats in the Cradle always comes on. <laughs> <laughs> One was this little old man who went, he used to live next door to me in an apartment in Topeka. And we used to visit with him sometimes with uh, my then wife. But anyway, he lived in the apartment next door and he passed away in his apartment. He was living with a stripper at the time. I'm not sure what was going on with that. I didn't ask, we didn't ask any questions, but. She worked at the uh, strip, one of the strip joints in Topeka, Kansas. Um, I forget the name of it. It was on the north side. I'm not sure if it's still there. But anyway, when this old fella died, um, his son came next door after we had went to the uh, wake and everything. And he said that his father wanted me to have his 1970 Vega. It was a three-speed on the column. I've mentioned this bef the car before in some stories, but it had a big giant rust hole on the floor and you can see the pavement going by underneath. Uh, so it had a piece of wood or something over it. But um, that was my first time driving a three speed on the column or a stick shift of any sort. It was a nice little car. It ran, got me around pretty good because I eventually brought it to Lawrence when I first came to Haskell. And that's that. Oh, here we have a uh, Flip Wilson. I don't have any Flip Wilson records yet, and this is cool. You all know I like my comedy stuff. Flip Wilson, the Devil, made me buy this dress. The Devil made me buy this dress. I guess <laughs> I say that every time I go to the record store, or thrift shop, antique mall. The Devil made me buy this record. Or maybe it was Caligula. Anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. Ted Knight and his guys. I think I might have seen Gary show this before. And some of his, one of his videos. That, uh, you know, I didn't even know Ted Knight uh, sang or if this is a comedy record. But we'll see. Um, Ted Knight, I, I, you might remember him from WKRP in Cincinnati, I think. That's, a, that's going to be an interesting one. Belly dance music from the Middle East. Ooh. My mom used to always play these belly dance records when I was a kid. This might go up. Um, up you know, I, I collect like cheesecake cake type album covers. And that might fit nicely in a frame. Gary. Cool, thanks. Oh boy. <laughs> he, knows, <laughs> he knows I like my sound effects records, and this is. I don't know. <laughs> the Sounds of Babies. <laughs> A preview of Blessed Events. I wonder it's, if this was taken during. Birth. It might have some screaming women in it as well, or some some type of uh, sticky sounds or something. No, that's too gross. Isn't it? Uh, anyway, the sound, the sounds of babies. That might be interesting. This might pop up in one of my videos to annoy you guys in the background. <coughs> All that. <laughs> oh shoot! Oh, Gary. Now this is a total surprise. Uh, I've mentioned to him again before that I don't hardly have any of these cardboard hit of the week records. And here he sent two of them. Betty Co-Ed. Phil Spittle, Spittleney's music. But these are cardboard hit of the week records which are 78's and they're very old like from the 40s I believe they used to sell these on newsstands and stuff and you could pick them up for what 10 cents or whatever it was back then quarter or something 
Not sure. But these are Hit of the Week records. If any of you have never seen these. And what's the use? The Phil Spitolini's group. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'll just call him Spittle. Phil Spittle. <laughs> Hit of the Week. Look those up if you get a chance. They're uh, very... They're antiques. Thanks, Gary. I was totally not expecting that. And Johnny Rodriguez, full circle. I don't know who this guy is, but it is an interesting cover with the horse drawing in the background. Uh, if I was a lady, uh, this would go up on the uh, cheesecake wall, but I'm not a lady. <laughs> this, uh, It'll be interesting to hear what this is. Johnny Rodriguez Full Circle. And we're at 11 minutes here. And I'll cut it off right there and say again, thanks Gary uh, for your very surprising VCLT I get in the mail today, which was I was not expecting. And eventually I'll get around to sending you something one of these days. And some others like David Young and uh, Karsten Olsen. I still owe him a letter or something. I haven't forgotten you guys. <sighs> Since I'm back to work, I'm just busy, busy, busy all the time. Like next week, um, my Aunt Vanita is getting, it's her inauguration. She is now the president of Haskell where I work. And there's a big shindig going on with the uh, barbecue and all of that and this is after the art Indian art market which starts this weekend but anyway thanks a lot Gary um, as always I'll put your link down below for anybody who wants to check out Gary's channel Colin over and out